Good morning, David. How are you doing? Good morning. Thank you, Thomas. Well, you probably need no uh, introduction here. David Highland, uh, you have probably more awards than I have actually years in real estate myself. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> so I've got a good team of people that like doing this issues. I say that much. All right, so this is this is the bit I want to ask you because I've done a little bit of research about you and you have spoken on REB and, and, and many other things. So what is the key to your consistency though? Because it seems to be you're always in those in that top level year in, year out. Um, look, I, I've been, I'm, I'm in my 25th year in real estate now. Yep. So I started straight after school and uh, it's kind of in my blood. So I'm a third generation real estate agent and uh, managing director uh, and principal of Highland Property Group. So we are located in Southern Sydney, but we've got a, a spread kind of all over Sydney, to be honest, and even interstate in terms of our project marketing at the moment. But I'd say the consistency is probably just more a, a, my general drive, I guess. And, um, you know, we love what we do and, you know, blessed to have a great group of people around us. So yeah. we're having fun and what else is there more to want out of work, I guess. So a lot of people have been in real estate for 10, 20 years. Uh, not many people have got that same passion after 20 years. And hence, while it may seem normal to some people that, you know, to see you up here at the top, I say it's it's crazy how after 20 years you find that that uh, passion and then you just keep on flying and soaring year in year out. So there has to be something else. I understand mm. in 2017 you, you had a uh, I think a, a two year old or three year old and, and and a baby on the way or and, and yeah so I've now, got three now actually you've got three now. <laughs> so yeah. so a young father now having the time and, and, and the pursuit of his own dream and balancing life. This, this is the thing that interests me. Mm. How do you do that and find that consistency? Well, I don't, I wouldn't say that I get it right the whole time. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a great wife at home and uh, a very understanding family. But look, my, my role has shifted. I think the, I think the key to sustainability in our industry is funny. I was, I met with, um, Ivan Bresik a few days ago, um, you know, we sat down and had some breakfast together and and obviously his, his career has uh, ch changed direction recently, but it's talking and ma making comparisons, you know, he made a very good example. He said that in real estate, it can sometimes be like playing sort of, particularly at the top level, can be sort of playing, you know, f um, first grade, you know, if you're a footballer and, and obviously as you get a bit older, things change and I guess the point there is my role has shifted and I think the sustainability and my energy levels towards the industry as a whole and our business has depended on me staying engaged and letting go of some of the things that you know maybe I was more passionate about in my mid-30s like I'm in my mid-40s you know I, I, at 35 I was still running around putting signboards out and you know chasing residential things as a focus whereas I'm still doing I'm still chasing the sales side of the business, but I've had to let go of, of the things that, that maybe maybe got me to that point. So I think in a nutshell, I'm still energetic about our business and, and the industry as a whole, because I see that at the moment things are shifting pretty quickly, you know, in terms of AI, the way that we use our data, um, technology as a whole at an industry level is just changing rapidly, but, but also, I'm excited about the current environment and that's really firing me up. So, you know, I obviously felt differently 12 months ago when yeah. we were kind of going into the coronavirus issue. But if you look at it now, it's just such a dynamic space that we're in, not only because the market's hot, but because things are changing, you know, month to month, year to year. At the moment. Yeah, okay, so, so what's so the biggest fine. change you think in, is happening so, so far? I mean, we're not just, just your standard sales business anymore. I mean, we've, we've got a, a big focus in financial services, for example, insurance, finance. Um, we've got a two and a half thousand property uh, management portfolio. Oh, wow. And then it's, it's about just kind of funneling that data for us and kind of understanding it intimately in terms of what we can do with it outside of just listing and selling houses. And that's kind of the fun space for me right now. And, um, you know, we're moving into yeah, you know, I mean, we've had a focus on project marketing for a number of years, but we're definitely dialing that up at the moment. So we've, we're involved in some major jobs in that space, and 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 that that's the space that I'm heavily embedded in right now.
So real estate is more than just selling uh, houses for you, right? You must have read my ad because that's exactly one of the taglines. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I did, I did, I, I, I promise you, exactly. I promise you, you I didn't. Uh, right in the paper, aren't you? I, I promise you I didn't. However, there was one thing that I heard and I thought I would want to ask you, is that you spoke about fearless social media. What does that mean? So, social media is obviously, uh, it's not a new concept now. No. I remember years ago speaking at a conference when it was new. And I don't think anybody in our industry has totally got it right yet. Wow, there's, okay. There's a lot of agencies. Hence the, word, that, hence the word fearless, right? And that's what I want yeah, to know. What does that you've mean? You've got to put yourself out there is probably what I mean. You know, you've got to be visible, very transparent around your message. You've got to be obviously on point in terms of engagement. It can't be like a pizza factory where you're just posting pizzas every day, you know, and, and the relevance behind that is some some agencies, and we've been guilty of that as well, it's just their social media is just list and sold, list and sold the whole time. And, and and that, to me, is very repetitive. I think the consumer as a whole wants to understand and engage with, you know, the, our company, for example, in our area. And, you know, you want to hopefully create a message, you know, which is aligned with your value set, and, and hopefully that will you know, attract clients, but also attract the right, the, the, the type of people that you want in your business at a, at a recruitment level as well. Okay. So let's imagine now that I start working for you and um, I'm asking you for advice now about how do I send a message of myself out there? Well, I, I mean, let's just talk specifically around our, around some of our agents. I mean, we've got a, a full resource marketing division. So yes, I know this. One of the functions of the marketing department is to on social media, for example. So I've got a social media specialist who's, who's it's a full-time role. Yep. Uh, you know, um, one of her roles is to sit down with the agents on a monthly basis and map out a social media plan, you know, for the, for the month forward. Now, that could look like a bunch of different things. That could include community. So in our area, we're heavy in terms of sponsorship. So we sponsor, in our core market, we've got the local leading um, soccer team, you know, which has got, you know, it's the, I think it's the largest community soccer team in terms of their memberships of anything in the area. You know, they've got roughly 1,500 people that we get access to. Um, we've got a, a, a rugby league club, which is about the same level. And then we're also involved in, in the union. Now, I've got agents who are specifically involved in those partnerships and those community programs with us. And that, that will form part of their social media plan. Obviously, just staying connected with the community. And there's a lot of business that comes out of that. Posting your family is, is, is really up to the individual. Um, personally, I don't do it. This is just my view. Um, I don't post my kids. I used to, I don't do it anymore um, for a bunch of reasons. But I, in the in pr years previous, I mean, that was that was engaging for, for clients because they could understand what type of person I was, you know, and maybe there was a part of it that, that they could relate to, but that's a decision that I've made in the last couple of years. And then obviously how we position ourselves in terms of real estate in our local marketplace and video is a great way to do that. You know, we love video. In fact, we can't get enough video. The, the, the problem is that quite, quite a lot of agents, they say, hold on, when I post a house or I post a sale or a great testimonials, I get uh, 22 likes. I take a picture of my child uh, saying two words and suddenly yeah. I have 450. And so there is a... It's true. It's so true. We, I've done it. Yeah. You know, we did it years ago. Yeah. I, I, for me, it's a personal choice now. Like we're, we're very visible. We're To a certain degree, we're kind of a household name in our marketplace now. Yeah. And, you know, you know, we're doing 750 transactions a year, $1.1 billion worth of sales last year. I mean, is, is posting pictures of my kids relevant to where I'm at right now? No. Was it relevant two or three years ago? Probably. Um, but now I'm just not comfortable with it. That, that's the long and the short of it. And, and that's just a personal decision. I didn't say, I mean, I, I actually think it at a basic level in terms of social media, I know that the engagement is is positive. So it's it's kind of each to their own. I've got staff in, in the office that do it, but it's also, you, you, You've got to be careful that you're not doing it strategically as well. I mean, the social media message has got to be authentic and genuine. Yeah. Otherwise, it, you know, it'll it'll show through anyway. Okay. Listen, I also read a good line from um, your bio is that you went from six people to 100, right? How do you mm -hmm. stay connected to 100 people? Yeah, it's actually day? 110 or maybe 120 <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. It's a... Look, it's a it's a big business now. You know, we've we've got lots of different people in lots of different roles. We've got 
three offices. I'm currently in our Cronulla office, which is our, our head office, if you like, yeah. with all of our resources in it. Um, but it's it's a diverse business. I'm very proud of what we've achieved. We've got a price point that can range from 400,000 right up to you know 10 or 11 million in local houses. And in December, I finalised a um, development site, which was well over 100 million. So, and, and we're doing everything in between, to be honest. And we're having we're having a lot of fun. But you know what? It's we're coming up to our 15th birthday, and it's been 15 years in the making. So, lots of sleepless nights through that period. And you know, we've ridden many, many cycles and we've gone through good times, we've gone through some scary times, but um, you know, we're, we're proud of where we are at the moment. And we're, you know, to be honest, I'm more excited right now than I've probably ever been. Yeah. But let's imagine I'm, I'm one of your 120 salespeople. How, how, how do you stay connected with me? Well, for starters, we don't have 120 salespeople. I've got 30 sales teams. Right. There's probably circa uh, 80 odd in, in the sales group, right. which includes uh, sales assistants, administrators, and, and obviously right. oh, sales associates and sales people. But how do I stay connected? I, I run majority of the sales meetings myself, which are every Tuesday. Um, I've got an amazing leadership team around myself. And um, yeah, I've got a lot of people that have been here who are significant part of our group who have been here from even from the start, from the date we opened. So yeah, we've got a We've got a great DNA and um, we're a culture centric business, but in terms of just staying connected, we, you know, I meet with our sales agents every quarter. I sit down and, and run through the quarter in review, quarter in advance. Um, we run a lot of events together, just at a, a, a cult, you know, so social level inside and outside of the office. And, and we try and include their families as well, because yes. they're, they're a big part of what we do. And, we spend more time with the people at work than we do with the people at home. So it's important that we include them yeah, in, in what's going on and make them feel like they're part of the group. But individually, you know, I've got an open door policy and, and, and I want any one of our staff, not only just sales agents, receptionists even to, you know, when there's things that they want to talk about, whether it be career paths or, or just general advice at an industry level or not, you know, I, I, hopefully I'm approachable and it's always worked for us. Now, another thing that really hit me as I was doing a bit of research about you is you speak a lot about emotional intelligence. In Actually, in one of your podcasts uh, a little while ago, you were talking about how you're balancing your emotions a bit better now. I really said we all go through ups and downs all the time, mm -hmm. right? So how do we, that consistency, what are some of the things that you do in terms of routines if you find someone like me being up and down every single day, one day mm -hmm. I want to conquer the world and I think I'm the best agent, the mm -hmm. next day I'm sitting down moaning about some issues I have, have at home and it goes up and down all the time. How, well, how do you fix me? That's uh, that's honestly a big big part of the leadership piece in, in our group. And it's probably more just a willingness or, um, you know, we just want to see our people at their best, you know, inside and outside of the office. So... Mm -hmm. You know, at a really basic level, I just feel like that starts with what's going on at home. Uh, obviously, you know, a set of behaviours which I think are going to encourage people to get the best out of themselves. And you know, that that obviously, I mean, for, for me personally, I'm I'm out of bed at you know five or five thirty every morning, depending on what day it is. And I'm doing exercise before my three kids get up. Um, I do yoga once a week. No, I train, you know, and I, I don't train anywhere near as hard as I used to five years ago because, to be honest, that probably wasn't sustainable either. But, you know, fitness, sleep and nutrition are key in terms of your emotional management. So you're a very disciplined kind of person, no? You remind me a little bit of a, a John McGrath that I, I used uh -huh. to know for quite a while ago. It, it, it's this discipline about you. It, do you live through routines? No, look, I... Um, I would say that, yes, I'm disciplined. I don't think that, you know, my, my life is, I've got a lot going on, particularly at a family level. So, you know, you've got to be flexible and nimble and every week's different to the last. Yeah. Um, I think I probably relaxed a little bit on what I look like probably in my 30s, but I probably needed to as well. Um, <laughs> but I, I think fundamentally, one of the reasons why we've been successful and, and consistent is just that determination 
you know, to, to make sure that we stay on track. And and here's the other thing, like we've I've always stayed in my lane. You know, I, I left school like everyone at 17 and I got straight into real estate then because I wasn't an academic and um, I didn't have too many options, but that was obviously the, the family. That, I mean, it wasn't the family business, but that's what we knew. And um, I remember at the time I had 14 or 15 of my friends that also got into real estate, my immediate friends at the time that got into real estate and, you know, 20 something, 25 years down the track, I'm the only one that's still in it. So, you know, I think to a large degree, real estate's one of these industries where if you, obviously you need to have some ability, you need to be cut out for it. But if you, like I said, just stay in your lane and and are consistent and work hard. And I never did any major, like I've traveled a lot, but I ne never did any major stints overseas. Um, I was always incredibly focused on, you know, where I wanted to be and, what that looked like, yeah. you know, I, I would, I would, I would say to any young agents, um, put your head down, and and this can be an amazing industry for everybody. Yeah. Let's imagine if I was to look into a real estate business, mm -hmm. what's the number mm -hmm. one thing that you look at before you say that business is going to do well or not? You know, it's it's probably people and process, to be honest, because the real estate side of things kind of takes care of itself now uh, at a brand level where. We're, we're obviously a strong strong name in our local and our local area is huge by the way like we're we're operating within you know a 20 30k radius sometimes sometimes more but you know in terms of a residential business it's a it's 110 120 thousand dollars so you know I, I think that the, 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 that that's probably the key for, from my side absolutely does success come at a price yes so uh, but if you had to do it again, would you pay the price? Yeah, I would. I'd probably do some things differently. You, you know, I looked at, and I've said this before, but over time you mature, yeah. um, being professionally. Um, I do think that, you know, as you get a bit older, you kind of reflect on, you know, the, the earlier years. And, and absolutely, I mean, there's no question in my mind that, you know, relationships came at a cost in the early days, you know, when you're working long hours. And yeah. I think in the early days, I had to be quite selfish with myself and my own time. And now I have the benefit of, of not having that issue, but, and balancing myself a lot better. And I have to as well, because I've got other responsibilities, but, but I certainly think that, you know, that's a sacrifice that I was prepared to make. And I don't make any regrets around that. I mean, we've got a great business and I've had such a, such a great career to this point and, and I hope that it continues, but um, I had to do the hard yards. Yeah. Um, to begin with, and that came at a cost in some areas. Yeah, it's good that you mature because my wife thinks that I'm silly mature. So uh -huh. at, least, at least there's <laughs> one mature person in here. Probably a smart girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and here's a question I always ask my guests now: is is this? How do you know you're living a good life? Uh, that's a great question. So I, I, no one's asked me that before. So I spent. Uh, three days on the Gold Coast with my kids this last weekend. Yes. And, um, yeah, kicking the just basic stuff now. You know, we've we've travelled all around the world and we've we've had some amazing times. But the fun stuff now for me is kicking a ball up and down the beach with my sons. And, um, you know, I, I would say that that kind of ticks all the boxes for me. Oh, wow. So, seriously, a man who's now found some kind of balance. That's good. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Listen, David, I really appreciate your time. I know you have to go. So I Thank hope you we catch up some other time. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you.